And I love teaching and sharing information on how you can be super successful um, implementing the tax lien and tax deed investing strategy, okay? So this is Tax Deed Tuesday. And every week, this is a place that you need to hang out with me and I will share with you, teach you information on how you could be successful. So tax deeds, let's talk about it. Some people have asked me, like, how do I identify, like, what state I want to invest in? Like, where do I actually invest? And I'm going to give you my top secrets <laughs> on how I identify where I want to invest, okay? So there are 32 tax deed states, right? So there's 50 states in the United States, 32 of them issue tax deeds. The others are tax lien states. Some states do one or the other, and then you do have some hybrid states that do both, but there's not many of those. Florida happened to be one of those states who does both liens and deeds. Nevertheless, the only reason I invest in Florida, not because I live here, it's because their laws are advantageous to my investing strategy. So what, do I, what does that mean? Well, personally, I like to invest in states where there is no redemption period after the deed, the tax deed has been issued. So I'm going to say that again. States that do not have a redemption period after the deed has been issued, okay? So what does that mean? It means that the the previous owner, the prior owner, I was trying to say prior and previous at the same time, it didn't work out. So the previous owner, if there's no redemption period, does not have any rights or access to the property after it's sold at the tax deed auction. Now, of course, you can see how that could be very advantageous for any investor, right? Now, you do have states that have redemption periods after the deed has been issued all right so there is like a time period that the um that the homeowner or the property owner because it doesn't have to be a home it could be land it could be a gas station it could be anything right so the property owner can come back and actually redeem and pay up all of their delinquent taxes plus the penalties and the fees and all of that stuff, right? So you would say, well, what's the probability of that actually happening? Well, it doesn't happen quite often, just FYI, because they were delinquent for a reason. They were having some type of hardship, and this is the reason why they even are on this list and going through this process in the first place. So personally, I don't like to take that risk. I don't want to have to have the heartache of, you know, having to, <laughs> to be reimbursed. I mean, it's not a bad thing. You're going to get your money back, right? If someone pays you back, they pay you back, right? But you ever been mad when somebody paid you back? You'd be like, I didn't want your money. I, didn't, I really didn't. I just wanted the property. <laughs> so that's what I'm talking about. You're like, uh-uh, keep it. You keep your money. It's okay. You don't have to give it back. So for me personally, I like to invest in states that do not have a redemption period after the deed has an issue. So what states are those? So example, Florida is one of those states that there is no redemption period after the tax deed has been issued. So ownership has been transferred and conveyed to the highest bidder for that tax deed. Another state that does not have a redemption period after the deed. I'm not talking about the lien. I'm talking about the deed. <laughs> after you have the ownership interest of that property, I'm looking for something that like symbolizes like a deed. <laughs> That's what I'm looking around. Anyway, Alabama is one of those other states as well. No redemption period after the deed has been issued. They have redemption period for the lien, but not for the deed. So it's really, really important for you to understand that difference because it just cuts down the risk as well as your waiting time. Now, you do have states that have really short redemption periods, which is kind of like, ah, uh, uh, I'll consider it. <laughs> they're, all like, they're like my secondary list. It's not necessarily like my, my primary go-to states, you know? Like, I believe Georgia has six months, 180 days. I'd be like, mm, it's kind of long. Texas. Texas is a penalty deed state. So Texas is really interesting. So the way how Texas, um, the law is written in Texas, it's as follows. Okay, so it's a penalty deed 
date, a penalty deed date. So at their auctions, any investor that um, is the highest bidder because it's a premium bid process, if they win the deed, contingent upon if it's a homestead, a homestead property or a non-homestead property, the redemption period can vary. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. So you got to be really, really strategic depending on what state you're investing in. So in the case of the state of Texas, if it's a non-homesteaded property, meaning that that property is not the primary residence of that, of that owner, then the redemption period is only six months. However, after the deed has been issued, however, if it is um, a homestead property in Texas, the redemption period is like two years. You're like, what? <laughs> I can't wait that long. I don't even have that kind of patience. Like I barely can like have enough patience for like what's for dinner, much less to wait that long. However, there are some like benefits though. <laughs> There's always like a benefit, right? There's always a reason for the season, all of that stuff, right? So in Texas, their interest rate for their penalty deeds, if the property owner redeems, is actually pretty steep, for real, for real. So like the first six months or first year is like 25%. So not only do they have to pay all of their arrears and everything, all of the delinquency in their real estate taxes that the total amount that they were due plus all the, the fees, the interest rate is 25%. Wow, that's a lot. Then if it goes past like year one, then it increases. No, it don't decrease in Texas. It go to 50% interest. You're like, whoa. So, you know, there's like great advantages. You just have to be able to understand the differences between all of these nuances and special ways of doing business and investing in tax liens and tax deeds depending on the state there's 50 states 32 out of them are tax deed states and it's a wonderful investment strategy if you know the law right if you know how to do it so i'm a huge advocate for reading statutes and understanding your left and and right limit and making sure that you know what your options are, what your rights are, who's right for the property owner, everything like that. So it's really, really cool. In the state of Florida, like I said, there's no redemption period. And the investor who owns the tax deed or wins the tax deed as the highest bidder at the auction, they have immediate right to possession. It says that in the law, like immediate right to possession. That means right then, right there, right now, that deed is recorded, the signature, it's wet, it's in the county record that you won, you have the right to immediate possession, like for real, for real, right? So what does that mean to you, future tax deed investors, if you're investing in Florida? That means that you can go to your property, and you heard me when I said your, all right? So you're going to go to your property, and you're going to secure your property all right change your locks lock the windows do whatever it is that you got to do put up your signs no trespassing you know your emergency information you're going to put all of that on the actual property if there's an occupant or somebody in your property first thing is first you're going to ask them who are you why are you here and you're in my property here's my deed you don't belong here, that kind of thing, and give them an opportunity to leave, right? We're not going to throw anybody out or be any, you know, really, you know, nasty like that. At least I'm not. I don't know about y'all, but I'm not like that. So I give people the opportunity to leave peacefully and to vacate the premises. Fair enough. And, um, you know, if there's any situation where they need time or they have it, like a financial challenges, I actually like will help someone leave. <laughs> so there's something called like cash for keys. I've rented U-Haul trucks. I've done, you know, above and beyond um, to help families out. I've put them in contact with like uh, charities and social services, things that they can um, use in order for them to find the finances for them to move out of the property. Because I'm not going to re-rent it or they're not my tenant. You know, I'm not going to acknowledge or sign any leases with anybody that's in any property like that. I don't do that. All right. So um, you can do what you want to do, but I'm telling you that I don't do that. So I always have the property vacant. All right. And I just start fresh. I start fresh with new peoples and, and, and new, like everything, new situation. I don't re-rent to anybody that's there. You don't have to, you're not obligated to do that. 
the law says you have the right to immediate possession. So whew, it's a lot. <laughs> so, you know, oh, here's another thing. So sometimes um, I think I got a question like last week and the week before, like, what do you do if someone does not want to leave? You have the right to immediate possession. There's no redemption period. The owner can't come back and um you know ask to you know get the property back they can't just like miraculously come up with the money and try to you know get it back from me i mean they could but then it'll be for sale <laughs> it's for sale then i'll sell it to you not a problem but um if you have like a um an occupant or someone that's in your property and technically they're trespassing right you have the right to immediate possession right you don't have a lease they're squatting they're in your property People ask me all the time, well, what about squatters' rights? Um, do you have to evict anybody? You know, do you have to honor their lease if they had a lease prior to that or anything like that? The answer is a, a no. <laughs> That's just not how it works, right? So there's a process, and um, that process is actually written in the state statute as well that says that if there's any occupant that's in the property that does not want to release possession, you just give them um, a five-day notice, and then you go back to the circuit court, and then you file a couple of documents um, for a writ of assistance, it's called, and um, yeah, a couple documents down at the courthouse, and then guess what happens, right? You're granted permission called a, a, a writ a writ of possession is what it's called. <laughs> I don't know, I'm talking too much. So a writ of possession. And what happens is that you are gonna have you and the sheriff of that county come to that property and escort um, whoever it is that's on the property and does not want to release it. So I know it sounds kind of like, oh, Jackie, that's so heartless. Oh my gosh, I can't believe like you've done that. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm just saying it's within your rights, right? So you know exactly what it is that you can do. Knowing your left and right limits, knowing the laws, knowing what's available to you is really, really important for you to be successful, not only as a tax lien and tax deed investor, but any investor, you should know your industry and you should know everything about the process, right? So I'm really happy and excited to share this information with you again. My name is Jackie Jackson. I'm a full-time real estate investor and I love investing in tax deeds and tax liens. So at any time you guys wanna reach out to me, feel free to do so. <laughs> I do uh, consultations. You can call me anytime. It's, it's all good. Um, I do answer my phone or I'll just schedule a time for us to talk if it's not convenient for, you know, us to get together at that moment. So y'all got to bear with me now. I do run a business. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it is so awesome and amazing to be with each and every one of you. And thank you so much. Thank you, everyone for the opportunity to serve you and to just really be um, a blessing and to share this information so openly and so candidly. I know that you appreciate it. I got that, but I just want to let you know how much you are appreciated for me. All right. So take care. I will see y'all. That was like my down south. It didn't work out well. Matter of fact, I'm from Brooklyn, so it, it doesn't work out. But anyway, I'll see you guys next week. All right. Take care. <laughs> Oh,